Hello and welcome to today's LOL Esports Roundup. We're going to cover the games from this morning in the LPL and LCK. Then preview LPL, LCK, and LCS for tomorrow. Um, I'm 52 and 28. We went 2 and 2 again. We are flipping a coin in my predictions. Um, and it is, it's not a good feeling. So, IG and EDG, both in my top 17 of my power rankings. If you missed my power rankings, they came out yesterday. IG were 2 and 0. EDG 1 and 0. IG would win 2 0 and handily. Um, game two was much more lopsided than game one. Um, YSKM was MVP going 10, five and 10, 22% of damage on 10, three and 10, and then leave went three, six and seven, 27% of damage for EDG. So the advantages of having a support that used to play AD carry, we saw Varus support for the first time today. Um, and, uh, wink looked fine. And that's the thing. Wink has that advantage and I said it yesterday that is a thing for IG that um, not everybody has you think TL has it C9 LGD um, you can go down a long list of teams that have former AD carries at the support position and this this meta will fit them um, you'll see that's why YSKM had the most damage on the team with 22% 22% isn't I mean it's just barely over one fifth right it was a very even um, display distribution of damage between the five players and that just goes to show you that it was a very very clean win from top to the bot lane um even dove did his part gideon did his edg really struggling um ale was killed three times in the early game in game two i think he was playing a jace he ended up in a hole could not get out of it yskm i remember specifically when the series began went after um jj in the early game, pushed him out of his jungle, invaded him, and that really set the tone. IG went after EDG immediately and um, did what they had to do, going to 3-0 and continuing this um, great streak. A team that, I mean, are surprising a lot of people, including myself. Uh, RNG and LNG, RNG 7th, LNG 14th. Uh, RNG were 1-1, one and one, LNG 1-0, and oh, LNG win 2-0. Oh. Um, Tarzan was MVP. Scout went 6-0-11, 28% of damage. Zika, 8-2-6 in top lane. Gala, 3-4-2, 31% of damage for RNG. So, Tang Wan started game one, and RNG went with an RNG draft. And I actually think that that's how they should play the game. Personally, I think it takes a lot of pressure after Tang Wan. I know I saw some people believe that it shouldn't have been done that way. And they were like, oh, look, they're drafting as if Xiaohu and Ming are still here. And they're not, so they shouldn't draft this way. It's like... Putting your mid laner on Galio takes a lot of the um, carry pressure off, in my opinion. Um, I think that that is a, a good idea to do. Now, Angel didn't start. And I was thinking, oh, well, Angel's just not playing yet. Game two, they sub Angel in. And that is a concern. Um, why the hell was Angel not in game one? And like I said, you know, you put Tang Wan on Galio, that's good. You took pressure off him. He shouldn't have been in the game. The minute Angel could play, Angel should have been in. I don't understand why the coaching staff believed it should have been the other way around. Um, essentially throwing game one away. Uh, game two, Scout played Yone and played a fabulous game. But uh, Tarzan ends up getting MVP. Despite, I mean, this perfect uh, KDA out of Scout, Tarzan gapped Wei. Um, the Maokai and the Sejuani, I mean, his Maokai was so much better than Wei's. Wei is not, Wei does not fit this meta, and he didn't really fit this meta in summer either. Um, game two, I think he played Poppy. And that didn't look good. Um, just not a... Um, he's just not feeling himself. RNG are not feeling themselves. Bunny is not it in bot lane. Um, Hung did a fabulous, fabulous series as well. So LNG are 2-0. and And they're cruising right now with a bot lane that I would say is pretty sus. Zika did his job beating Breathe. Solo killing Breathe, I believe, at one point. So it was a good good showing out of LNG. Uh, LCK, Nongshim, and Sandbox. Sandbox 20th in my power rankings, 3-1. and one, Would win 2-0 over, over Nongshim, who came in 1-3. and three. Closer, 6-4-11, 27% of damage. He did play Jace mid. I said Jace mid needed to be a thing. Um, that is a pick that needs to be flexed around. It needs to become meta. Envy, 10-2-4 and four was MVP. Envy played a fabulous series game two. Uh, game one. I was going to say game two. Game one, he had a triple kill early on, I believe, in a fight that really decided the game. Well, actually, I don't even think it was early. Mid-game, this was a very slow. See, I'm mixing games around because it was two times, so I'm trying to 
get them all down um, in my head here. And I remember a triple kill where I think the game was close, still kill-wise, and it was uh, 20 minutes or so. And uh, Envy gets a triple kill, and they run after that. Um, and uh, game two, he did very well, I think, on a Caitlyn. So um, good series overall out of him. DNDN, 241, 27% of damage for Red Force. He had one solo kill out of those two kills. So uh, that's a pretty good, um, pretty good, uh, I guess, <laughs> solo kill percentage out of total kills. Neither, I mean, he didn't impact the game overly. I mean, 2, 4, and 1, only 3 KP out of how many kills. Um, but did show lane supremacy over Birdall, so that's a thing. As DNDN DN continues to, I think, pace the LCK in top lane and solo kills. Um, Gen G and D plus Kia. So this was a big one. Gen 6, D plus 2nd, both 3 and 1. Uh, Gen would win 2-0. I said in the Discord just now. Um, my power rankings... I say I have an algorithm, right? And uh, it's for minor region teams, and I compare it to what the algorithm says about major region teams, trying to figure out where the minor re region teams may fit. And um, towards the very top, I mean, we don't have minor region teams on there that have played in the top 25, right? And that's for a re good reason. Um, PCS and VCS will end up up there, though, um, depending on how much they dominate. But regardless, how it focuses on this. So I uh, actually had Jen as the better team going into the series, but... You know, I don't, um, despite what people might think, I do not live and die by my algo. I only use it as a reference for my power rankings when it comes to major region teams. So I thought D-plus would win this 2-1. to one. I predicted that, and it didn't end up being the case. Jen ran him over 2-0 in a big way. Pays dominated. The bot lane dominated. Pays 12-1-12, 37% damage. Delight 0-1-28. And, um... At support as delight is the is a massive surprise like he is really really doing well after being like hand like shackled by bro the last little bit and maybe it would, would change maybe this changes the opinion of bro players really like uh morgan who's been there for a minute umpty henna you know players that are kind of stuck there maybe they do well umpty and, and and morgan have been around the block but a player like henna really hasn't had a lot of opportunities maybe henna is better than what bro allows him to be right um because delight is doing a great job um death to three five four 33 percent of damage so a couple takeaways here one swain is not good why is swain picked by showmaker in game one i don't know who picked it regardless it was a bad pick the minute I saw that, when I started the um, the um, times two, I was like, oh my God, what is this? What is this? And Showmaker struggled. He got gapped by Chovy and Lane in game one. Absolutely gapped. And this was not, this This is like, Chovy is the, the best mid laner in the world. I have to specify that now because Kerry is the best player. But um, Showmaker does not get gapped like that. And I think the Swain has a lot to do with that. Um, and he just, it just did not look good. Uh, uh, Doran played well into Kana, I felt like. But D, D plus still were, uh, like, they were in a good spot in both games. Their gold lead wasn't massive, but they were in a good spot. And in the end, lost both games. As the bot lane of Jen really, really did work. Um, Pays continues to impress. Um, I still will not call him Ruler. But um, he, he is impressing. And... Um, D plus, like I said, if you missed my 13 2 1 B, whatever video I just made, Lucian Nami being out of the meta may be a problem for D plus. We'll see what happens. Deft obviously can play Varus and things like that. I don't re recall. if he, I think he played Sivir both games, but I could be wrong. I think they gave him Sivir Yumi both times. And the way I see 13 1's hierarchy is Zeri Yumi, Lucian Nami, and then we have Zeri Lulu, Sivir Yumi, Varus Heimer. Uh, you know, in the variations of AD carry bot lanes, you know, I think that's how I, I see it. Um, and then, uh, Kate Lux is like way down here. Kate Lux is, is bait. So, um, Jen 2-0 over D plus. We'll see how that affects the power rankings next week. Both teams have another series to go. Um, sneak peek for tomorrow, um, in the East LPL, these, these series are not nearly as exciting as those ones. Ninja in pajamas and JDG. JDG third in my power rankings, 1-0. Nip coming off of a loss to Rare Adam, 2-0. Um, so they are 1-1. One one. JDG's only series, they beat BLG 2-1. Uh, Ruler had a Penta in game three in that one. Um, week eight, day two, JDG would win in summer, 2-0. 
Half of the players from that series are in the series tomorrow. Um, 369 went 8, 7, and 17. And if Rich ends up playing for Nip, he went 6, 8, and 14. Fodic, Zhu, and Ruler missing is the matchup I'm highlighting. I think Fodic is a great player. Um, I thought that, you know, he got picked out a couple times, picked off a couple times in the in the last series, and that is something to make note of. But he was in a position where he was hard carrying. Um, he made a mistake, but he made a mistake in five seconds of what was a very good 35-minute game. So do I think that they're beating, like, I'm not going to give away my prediction, um, but the fact is I don't think, like, does that mean he's going to be better than Ruler? No, but I think that that bot lane is going to be competitive. I do. Um, after that, we have Top Esports and Rare Adam. Top 1-1 one one, coming off of a loss to Weibo 2-1. Rare Adam beat Ninja in Pajamas 2-0. Week 7, Day 3, Top would win 2-0. Six out of the ten players from that series in summer or in the series tomorrow. Both junglers overlap. TN 7-8-11. and 11. Lay in 3-9-6 and six in that one. Rookie and Strive is a matchup I'm highlighting. Three out of four voters agree. Not a lot of people excited about this one. Um, it is pretty one-sided. Probably more... No, it's hard to really say. I guess I can't say it's more one-sided than that because we have the a, a, this team beat this team. And this team is ranked higher than this team. So I can't... Like, this team's better than top. I can't say this series is this, this series more lopsided. I guess I can't. It does feel that way, though. It certainly does feel that way. Uh, Strive played very good in their win against Nip. I think he was my MVP. So um, that kind of says it all when it comes to why I picked Rookie versus Strive. I mean, I really don't think that he holds a candle to him. But uh, we'll see what happens. T1 and HLE. T1 4-0 first in the power rankings. HLE 1-3. T1 beat D plus 2-1 on, on Saturday. Jen beat HLE 2-1. Week 8, day 2 of summer. T T1 would win 2-0. Uh, all five T1 players are back from that series. HLE has a new clean slate. Caria had a perfect KDA of 0, 0 24 in that one. Um, the bot lane is a matchup I'm highlighting, and three out of six voters agree. Gumi Yusi, Gary, Caria, and then Viper Life. Um, obviously, Viper Life need to get it together. Um, and it's possible they never do. Sometimes bot lanes just don't work, and it's possible this one doesn't. Um, I think you think about it in any sport, in any situation where you have a, a doubles situation. They've never played together, and sometimes the pieces don't match. And I think a lot of people, you know, are saying life stinks or Viper stinks, and it's like they just might not be able to play together. That's just a reality of life. Um, you can't, like, dis discount years of good play because they can't get together right now. Like, it just might not be a thing. So, um... They have their work cut out for them, but uh, no better time than get it to get it together than now. Uh, before that, I swapped these on accident. Bro and DRX are supposed to play. Bro, 2-2, two and two, 22nd in my power rankings. DRX, 1-3, and three, coming off of a win against the Freaks, 2-0. Bro lost to Sandbox, 2-1. Week 6, day 1 of summer. DRX would win 2-1. to one. 4 out of the 10 players from that series overlap tomorrow. Barrel being the only one from the winning side. He went 3-2-9-27 uh, and 27 in that one. Morgan versus Rascals, the matchup I'm highlighting. Five out of six voters agree. Um, DRX need to play around Rascal more if they want any chance in hell, and that's pretty much how I'm going to leave it when it comes to that one. Um, Bro, finding ways to win in bot and top, so we'll figure out how that goes for them. Um, this is another test for DRX as they try and prove that they are better than these bottom feeder teams, um, which is it's important because coming into the year, I had them sixth pretty solidly, but... Um, Thus far, they've proven proven not to be the case. I mean, they're out of my top 25, right? So um, now on to the LCS portion of the sneak peek. Okay, so uh, LCS returns week two. CLG and C9. C9, 13th in my power rankings. Coming off of a win against Golden Guardian. CLG off of a win to EG. So both started the season off 2-0. Playoffs, C9 would win 3-2 against CLG. Nine out of the 10 players from this series will be playing tomorrow. Um, only Diplex replacing Jensen is the difference. Fudge went 20, 16, and 27 in that one. Dokla 22, 19, and 21. So I expect that to be a heated matchup between the two. That's a matchup I highlighted. Uh, Discord voters agreed. Um, Fudge obviously doing very, very, very well on the Quesante. Um, CLG cannot give him the Quesante. It's as simple as that. Um, I think that that is the key to success. CLG proving that they... Um, 
have that edge of having all five players together. Both of these teams proving, hey, we have an edge because we have a lot of our players returning to action this year. FlyQuest and Golden Guardians. Fly, the other team in my top 25 from the LCS, are 10th. 2-0, GG, 0-2, coming off of a loss to C9. Fly beat Dig. Week 5, day 1 of summer. Fly won. Two out of the 10 players from that series are in the game tomorrow. Uh, Licorice and Stixay for Golden Guardians. So the losing side, Stixay went 2-2-1. Excuse me, Vikla versus Gori is a matchup I highlighted. I saw pictures that Gori was in LA, or at least in an airport. So if Gori is here, hopefully he is playing. If not, I don't know what to say. I guess it becomes Spica versus River. But I really hope Gori plays tomorrow, and it's Vikla versus Gori. Um, a, a Korean matchup, an LCK. Well, they never played in the LCK because Vikla was a rookie last year, and Gori played in the LPL and PCS. So, it'll be an interesting one, nevertheless. Dig in 100 Thieves. Dig 0-2. 100 Thieves 1-1. 100 T beat Immortals. Dig lost to Fly. Week 6, Day 1. 100 T would win. Uh, two out of ten players from that game are in the game tomorrow. Um, spawn for Dig and Closer for 100 Thieves. Closer went 1-3-0 in that game. Uh, I feel like Dig must have won it. Why do I have 100 Thieves as a winner when Closer went 1-3-0? Doesn't matter. It's too late now. Jensen and Bjergsen, the two old men in mid lane in the LCS. That's the matchup I'm highlighting. Four out of six people agree. Um, yeah, I think that goes without saying. The two best mid laners in LCS history duking it out. Um, you know, one of the last few times we'll probably see it um, as both players kind of age out. Immortals and TL both 0-2. Uh, these 0-2s are not created equally when it comes to um, expectations. TL lost to TSM. Immortals lost to 100 Thieves. Week 5, day 1 of summer, TL would win. Three out of the 10 players in that game play tomorrow. Revenge and Kenvi for Immortals. Core JJ for TL. Core JJ went 1, 3, and 12. A Blaze Olive and Harry is the matchup I highlighted. I don't really know why I did. I think it was a matter of, literally, I don't like any of these matchups. Um, Revenge versus Summit is the matchup the Discord agreed with. And... Um, I think that's because it's really one-sided in Summit's favor, and the, and the Discord really enjoys chaos. Um, however, I think Harry versus Blaze Olive, it's a good opportunity for Harry to really break out and um, dominate an opponent and give us an opportunity to see what he's all about. So, um, that's uh, for him. Um, TSM and EG. TSM, surprisingly 2-0. EG 1-1. EG lost to CLG. TSM beat TL. In the playoffs in summer, EG would win 3-2. to two. Six out of the ten hold players are holdovers from that series playing in the game tomorrow. JoJo Pune, 17-10 and 46. Maple, 17-13 and 24. That is a matchup I highlighted. I think Maple and JoJo, they should go back and forth, be a pretty close um, matchup. Discord likes Boogie versus Inspired. I think Inspired is a lot better than Boogie. Um, however, um, maybe Boogie gets the job done. Um, but the mid lane matchup, I think should be close. So it should be fun. Um, but yeah, so that's it for this video. If you liked it, like it. Um, if you missed a video earlier today, I went over patch 13.2, 13.1B, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, highlighted, I guess, 10 teams that are most affected by the patch, how it affects and impacts LOL esports teams individually going forward. Um, so that's that. Uh, like I said, like the video, subscribe to the channel, become a YouTube member. Three dollars a month supports me. Ten dollars a month gets the predictions. Like I said, what did I go? Fifty-two and twenty-eight. If you want to know my predictions, that's at the ten-dollar tier, three-dollar tier. You get a badge in the comment section, and you're a supporter, and everyone knows it. And that's you know if that's what you want to do. Um, join the Discord. We do a lot of fun things on there. Uh, follow me on Twitter, and thank you for watching.